All right. I'm already, I'm had to talk to financial aid today. I'm already like on 100 right now. So today is the last day I will be discussing Resident Evil Impotent Darkness. I will do my best not to reference this in any other video that includes Resident Evil because it's terrible. I'm just going to say right now, the rating doesn't matter. It is so not entertaining at all under any circumstances that giving it any rating is an insult to anything that has ever gotten a rating in history. It's nothing. It has no substance. Episode four has everything that's wrong with this series. And I say that with a question mark at the end because this could have literally been a movie and wouldn't have been so first, the pacing, if you did not intend for me to watch this, I'm not going to binge watch this thing. I don't care how short it is. I'm not going to binge watch it. You made it an episodic thing. It is at my leisure. Logically speaking, a new episode for a series comes on every week. So I should be able to watch an episode every week and feel content. These small banger episodes are not entertaining they do not drive me enough to keep watching this slop. I see a lot of people on Twitter talking about, oh, I, I was suspenseful, so great, 10 out of 10. And then when people say, no, it wasn't, you know it wasn't, people have the audacity to be like, oh my gosh, just let people enjoy things. I'm sorry. I didn't know we were doing this. I didn't know we're going to sit here and act like we can't criticize things and then take it to offense of someone. Liking Resident Evil Infinite Darkness is not a personality trait. It's not something you were born with. You were not born into this world with that associated with your spirit and being. So if I reference, if I acknowledge the insignificance, the boo-boo-ness of Resident Evil Infinite Darkness, that is not an attack on your character because it cannot be a part of your character. The people who did the voice acting, I am not going to them and I'm not harassing them. I don't want anyone to harass anyone. I, for one, have talked about multiple voice actors that I have issues with for one reason or another, and I have never said go to them and do anything. So don't come at me in the comments and don't play games on Twitter. Like y'all know for a fact, anyone who has played Resident Evil any Resident Evil, even Resident Evil 6. This crap is not good. Let's get down to business. We start in one of the most political places in the world, the White House. This man is sitting looking at this piece of cord like that's the only freaking thing the President of the United States has to do. Yes, it's a big thing, don't argue with me. This man has done nothing but look out windows and look at pieces of paper on his desk. Realism went out the door when Claire was attacked and she did not have a piece on her hip. It went out the window when I heard the OP and it sounds like some freaking propaganda film for America. What is this crap? Y'all love to talk about don't talk about politics. You literally made this thing drenched in politics. Resident Evil has always been about anti-capitalism anti-corporation is umbrella the good guy no but guess what they try to rebrand in resident evil 7 literally everything is about anti-capitalism always been political so for any loser scrubhead or wing ding dong who thinks they can pull up and say it's never been political you do not live on earth you don't live with the rest of us you live somewhere else and you need to return there physically because I'm tired of seeing you. This crap is one of the most political pieces of garbage I have ever seen in my entire life. For any, who was the one, I actually think this was a rumor. This has to be a rumor that they came out and said, don't talk about politics. It has got to be a rumor. Someone link in the comments specifically, and I'm not talking about the person who talked about a person saying, don't talk about politics. I am talking about the person the person who said don't talk about politics in this series when you are reviewing it who is that person who what stand up will the real slim shady please stand up bueller i am asking where this person is not only have they obviously quite obviously never have laid a finger on any console remote or computer key to play any resident evil 
title, but they have not set eyes on this series that should have been a movie. It would have been more digestible as a movie. It would have made more sense as a movie. Takes place one fourth in the White House, one fourth in another country, fighting not only domestic enemies, but they are fighting foreign enemies in the form of the US government. And then you have the audacity to bring China in this when China did nothing to y'all. This isn't even about being pro-China or anything. This is pretty interesting that you put literally every political trope, civil war, government within government, conspiracy in this quote-unquote series and then tell us as reviewers the consumers to not talk about politics episode four starts in the white house claire is captured by some dude that was the same dude that blew up Penam stan's people and then he's trying to blame china so that the president will start a war how is that not political what politics are we not supposed to be talking about here the fact that Claire Redfield, the reason why she was sidelined in her own franchise is because you guys are misogynistic and sexist. Is that the politics you didn't want us to discuss? You were fine with us thinking that America was impeding on yet another civil war that we should not have been involved in. The fact that China is their enemy, supposedly, based on this lore that you're trying to spit at us in this series. You don't want us to talk about how Claire, after years and years of issues, would not be carrying a piece and would pick up a lamp and see two people come into her motel room, kick the door closed rather than leaving out of that same door. They don't see her yet. You're going to make her stupid because your mother, your mother was stupid. You grew up with a stupid mother, maybe a stupid grandmother, too. And you're going to blame it and take it out on Claire Redfield? At least you gave her the initiative to at least try to escape. In Vendetta, Rebecca just stood there. Just stood there. So this whole scene, they're going back and forth. Old dude, don't care. He's like some general or whatever. I don't, t don't care. I don't even know his name. I thought he was the president for, for a second. And then I looked him up and he wasn't the president. He's just some Anglo-Saxon of the Caucasus Mountains. They're sitting there having banter. You make Claire grunt a little, sitting in the chair, still a weakling, still a weakling. Leon would definitely already be out of the chair. He would have jumped on his back, split the whole chair in half, swung it around, knocked out five guys with, with guns in their hands. The five guys would have guns in their hands and he would take him out with that whole chair and then tie the other dude up in the newly built chair he made from the bits of the broken chair. That's what Leon S. Kennedy would have done. That's what you would have made him do. Doesn't matter if it's possible. Doesn't matter if it's plausible. Doesn't matter if it's even logical. You would make him the hero in the end. Just like he's supposed to be the hero and save Claire. Are you serious? You're serious. He admits that Claire Redfield is a survivor of Raccoon City. And look at the survivor. Look at it. There's two survivors of Raccoon City that we know of. Other than Sherry, I don't care about Sherry. I never cared about Sherry. Why was she in Resident Evil 6? Did y'all literally pick names out of a hat and say, oh my goodness, is Sherry? Let's put her in there. Literally, Barry Burton could have been in Resident Evil 6. Hey, 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 I got a great idea. How about Claire Redfield could have been in Resident Evil 6? Why was Leon and Chris there and Jill Valentine and Claire Redfield were absent, but you got Sherry Burkin up in there like anyone wanted to play her? Pierce who, like I said, Helen who? I don't care about Helen. I laughed when her sister died in her arms. I laughed. Laughed. I don't care about them. So look at these two. You get Claire Redfield tied to a chair like Princess Peach, like freaking Daphne. You've been daphne -ed. Notice how I have all these examples of damsels. Vicky Vale, Lois Lane, all these damsels. It's because of men like you who make these garbage freaking series and movies where the women are used for nothing but getting information out of and being damsels. Not with Claire Redfield. You won't. Not with Claire Redfield. She's been through too much for her to just pick up a lamp, for her to not just fight or flight. There was no reason to fight when they were in a dark room. They didn't know where she was. I would have gotten shot in the back running rather than getting electrocuted and getting taken away. So you've got Claire Redfield, a survivor of Raccoon City, reduced fully 
to a damsel in distress. I don't care how many quips you equipped her with. I don't care how many times she spits in the face of any captor. This damsel thing it's gonna end. It's gonna end real quick. So Leon, on the other hand, is gonna rush in like the Batman, like the Superman, like the Flash, all three combined, and protect the damsel. So this dude, who's supposedly in charge of military people, he's developed a drug. He didn't steal a drug. He developed it himself. Well, so okay, that's really interesting that you're giving this man so many things he can do. He's like some general or whatever. He's not a frontline infantry person. He's the person on the back burner, looking back and at a safe distance from fighting, telling people what to do. He's developed a drug. He just has this whole intricate thing where it's just like, okay, the drugs are here. And then we're going to put BOWs down in Pan Am stand. And then like, are you serious? Okay. Don't care. He's selling super soldiers. He's selling super soldiers. Where have I heard that before? Hmm. Can you think of a the exact same thing? So this isn't an original. We this isn't even an original for Resident Evil. Like it was cool when they were just throwing hunters at people. Now you're just making people people. Like okay, come with something better. Hunters to me, I think are better than just a, a human. I mean, yeah, they can use a gun or whatever, but guess what? That's what tyrants were for. You're basically making miniature tyrants. And then there's this cringe moment where Claire's like, what type of monster are you? Oh, wait. You love to give a girl a one-liner before they get hit. So it's basically like, stay in your place, woman. You may have your mouth, but I have my fist. Enough with that, too. Like, Claire literally doesn't have to say anything to this dude. And literally all he, had, all he said was, oh, I get to, I'll let you live. It's just that and the other. All she had to do is be like, okay, I won't say nothing. That's fine. And just sit there like smug. And he'd probably still slap her because y'all love to see that. Like, I really don't know what you have against your mother or whatever, whomever made this. Like, but honestly, get it together. You need to get counseling. You need to stop making movies and shows. You need to get counseling. You need help. She headbutts him and, and then he still shows that she has no control and grabs her with one hand. This This man, how old is he? Does he have a virus in him or something? You guys don't know how old people are. Like, I'm not saying people who are 50 and over cannot move at all. But what I'm saying is Claire is a lot more spry than this man. What I said Leon would have done in this situation, Claire literally should have done. And there should have been no problem for her to do that. It seems interesting that when a woman has any agency at all, any power whatsoever, she's a Mary Sue. But when Leon S. Kennedy is the same person, same character, no development whatsoever. And even when he's a drunk, tipsy loser, he's still aiming better than Chris Redfield, who is sober. He's not a Mary Sue. There's silence. Silence. No, no quarter of a man talking about, well, Leon S. Kennedy has been like this forever. Is he a virus infected monster? Or is he a Mary Sue? No one says Mary Sue. They say Mary Sue because they want to be like, oh, this is a male version. I'm going to say it's Mary Sue if it's a man or a woman. Equal rights, baby, boom. I'm not going to give you some cutesy alternative masculine name. You're getting the Sue. You're getting Mary. You're getting the Sue. And that's what Leon S. Kennedy is, if it exists. I have a thesis for Mary Sue. It doesn't exist. Every woman character that people say is a Mary Sue is just the main character or just like let's let's talk let's talk about that for a second, shall we? Who's some Mary Sues that people love to talk about? Um main character Cora from The Legend of Cora. I don't like her. Y'all made her terrible. But she's a Mary Sue because she's the main character and she's better than everybody else. That's real interesting. That's why they gave her, it was literally like torture porn, the final episodes of that show. Because they were like trying to undo all the stuff that people said were Mary Sue. And that's not even any better. Not any better to, to watch a woman get destroyed over and over and over again after being so strong. It just makes them look really stupid. Which is a win-win for both the crowds that say that Mary Sue's exist and the people who constantly try to point them out in women only. They love to talk about how men are Mary Sue's because, well, he had training that we never saw. We never saw Leon train. We never saw any of the rest of them train, but guess what? They were already operatives before Leon pulled up on the scene, so he shouldn't be any better than them. 
And if you want to talk about the age thing, let's talk about the age thing. Claire is still in the same range as Leon. She should actually be better than Leon because her brother has been helping her the entire time. That's why she can mix herbs and whatnot, but whatever. Y'all not ready for that conversation. I'm not here for it. If Leon can exist and be overpowered and be getting every girl's kiss, every girl's gaze, if these ugly, disgusting, fat lards in these stupid movies can get the girl and get what they want at the end of the day, and not be called Mary Sue's. Let these women exist in peace. I want something more than just some little girl who's used for exposition and is a medic. And in every game she's ever appeared in, she's weak. I want more than some handmaiden that teaches not knows children and gets tied to a chair and gets her arm broke. I want something more. I am a woman. Hear me roar. For real. Stop. It's getting weird so this dude's a secretary his name's secretary wilson and that's the only reason why i know is because the hero penom stand pulled up even though he was shot is interesting okay yeah he's he's got the virus and i expected him to mutate or something but we haven't seen him in like two episodes but guess what that would have all been fixed like we can play this game we can play this stupid 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 game that some of you guys like to play and say, well, let's just look at this thing. Let's not call it Resident Evil, even though it's Resident Evil. Let's not consider it Resident Evil. Let's not even think of it as a part of the canon, even though it says Resident Evil in my face and it's got Claire Free Redfield Leon S. Kennedy in it. Let's just pretend and just look at it by itself. This story would have flown better as a movie. Right there, knocks it down five points. The pacing is terrible. Then the OP starts, skip. And because we went... Five seconds without seeing Leon S. Kennedy, we had to see him run with not Ada down some hallway. And that was literally the scene. That was just the scene right there. The pacing's terrible because what on earth? That scene just makes no sense. Like, stop throwing in Leon when he doesn't need to be here. For real. We already know this is a Leon Chronicle. Like, dumb. So Jason, the hero of Papa John's Pizza, starts attacking the secretary. And he's like, oh, you need the virus thing. And then he's like, nope. He stomps it. Kill him. Break his head right now. He's just sitting there. So we get like five minutes of him not breaking his head open. He mutates really quickly. You'd think that it would take some time. But it doesn't. He just bit him. I guess he was saving him so that he would be nice and warm when he pasted on his flesh i guess so he looks like mega groot and claire's kind of just like rocking in her chair trying to get out of there and i think it's really interesting it pulls that whole lab pulls a red queen and it's like oh the contamination is too much gonna lock it down up in here and then they zoom in on old jason but that's funny that's funny because he was already infected that should have went off when he walked into the room but it only did it when he mutated. You could be one of those people that keeps for this garbage for no reason because Capcom doesn't care about any any fans. They don't care about the Leon fans. They don't care about the Claire fans. The only reason why they're pushing Leon is because they care about your money. He doesn't sell games. He sells movies. No one wants to be Leon in a game. But if you're going to play that game and play devil's advocate with this thing and be like, well, when he mutated, technically, it, it just was... It, it was just... No. How long has he been infected with that bullcrap? It should have went off when he walked in the room. And it would have even made more sense if the antidote, if it had, I don't know if it was dormant. I don't know if it would have made more sense if when he crushed it under his foot, it was like, oh yeah, it's up in here. Because you don't need it if you don't need it. So it would still be a biohazard. But whatever. I'm just thinking logical here. My mistake. So here we go. I think it's real interesting that you guys just can't come up with your own bullcrap. I literally can sit here, give me a day, and I can come up with 10 different plots for two hour long movies that you can literally put in progress right now. So this whole scene right here is just reminiscent of Resident Evil 2. I'll give you three examples of why. Firstly, acid drops and it goes in there it's kind of like the lava that was in resident evil 2 when mr x or whatever came along and he went into the molten lava and whatnot in dark side chronicles old dude kind of looks like what's his face as well that's another one claire redfield and leon s kennedy even though they're not equals they're not equals because she is a damsel i think it's really interesting 
Why is it that they came from the same game? And if we're not going to go over who's got more games, which it is Claire. Claire's more significant to the canon than Leon. But if you guys want to play that game where be like, no, uh, and suck off Leon, they came from the same game. If Leon gets two apples, why does Claire get an apple core? If Leon gets a Ferrari, why does Claire get a used, unidentifiable vehicle? I don't understand. It is misogyny. No one can argue that it's not misogyny. You just can't. They should be getting equal billing. So why is she the damsel? Why wasn't Leon the damsel? That would have been a nice turn of events. Would have been interesting if that Asian girl was against him and like, haha, I fooled you. And he's the one that she's got to go save. But no, Claire ends up with a broken arm at the end. And Leon unscathed. Not emotionally, not physically, nothing. Same person. Why do you guys still want to see that? You love to talk and love to slander when women don't change and they're the same when they make characters and write them like that. But when men are like that, y'all love to talk about them and y'all love to suck them off. And literally they do the worst, absolute worst thing. I literally, I can't, I don't think I can, I can't, I can't. So as the crescendo of it all, as the climax reaches its peak, Claire is sitting there watching it like TV in a chair while not Ada, Leon S. Kennedy, and the hero of Penom Stan, mutated, are talking. And sadness all around because he's like, I'm going to expose them. Look at me. I'm going to show them. Don't you guys understand? First of all, he let that other dude go. He bit him and then let him go. Like, okay, whatever, dude. I know that he's tortured you and whatnot, but the least you could have done is throw him in that acid bath below you. But since you don't want to do that, and it's real interesting, he's the one who created the virus. Do you not think that he's got some extra antidote or something? And yes, he would have to take it for the rest of his life, but he'll be alive. You should have thrown him into the acid. But dum-dums be dum-dums. So, and he's juxtaposed to Leon S. Kennedy, so he has to be dumber than him. They're sitting there, they're talking, and everything's sad. And Claire's literally, Claire's literally sitting there watching it. Somebody get her some popcorn. Then Leon's gonna start shooting at him like he doesn't know the drill. You need something stronger than that itty bitty teeny weeny little polka dot bikini you got in your hand. Leon is so dumb. You guys think he's so smart and so cool, but he really is dumb. He's like, no, that's not the way. Maybe he could have been like, you know what? Let's talk about this above ground. Let's go get Claire because she screamed my name and they acted like she didn't. She literally screamed his name. So I don't understand. And another thing, if he didn't hear her say his name, she literally screamed his name. He, if he didn't hear her scream his name, then she could not have seen him because they were so far away. I couldn't even see him that y'all knew to not put them in the, the cut where she's looking because it's impossible how does she know that's Leon's from so far away? That just makes no sense. Why was Claire even a part of this story? Why does she have to be so hindered? Now, because Leon likes to play bootlick, he literally is dangling. Everyone's stuck inside. He could have just said, okay, you know what, Jason? Grab us. Grab us. Take us to the top and we can talk about it. But no, he decides to start shooting like freaking white earth. And then Jason does something so stupid. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. It's not even stupid in the logic of this show in particular, which is what y'all love to do, that y'all love to separate everything and say, well, it's not a part of some big thing, even though it says Resident Evil. It just makes no logical sense for him to have killed Shen Mei. She's like, I, I don't want you to die. She literally does the thing that women do that you think you can save every man. Oh, rub against his chest. Oh, I won't let you die like this. He grabs her arm and breaks her in half. Breaks her in half. So you made her stupid. You made her skip to my loo, swinging back them hips like she could swing back them hips and seduce this man. Put her hand on his chest and then you break her. He's in his right mind, by the way. He's not grunting and, and moaning. He's in his right mind. He's like, I'm already dead and breaks her. How does that make any sense? How are we supposed to see that coming? That isn't, you just wanted to make him bad. You literally put this dude in the worst light to where we are forced. And we're not forced as in, I'm, I'm still not. I'm not no bootlicker for the United States of America, especially not in this crap, what they're doing. And they're making it seem like the president ain't got nothing to do with this. And he's just being manipulated into signing some concord or whatever. That's not how life works. That's not how life works. 
It's not just one person controlling everything. Everyone's a part of it, whether it be indirectly or directly. And I'm 100% sure if this was going on, the president would directly be responsible. Absolutely. It just makes no sense for Jason to have broken that woman in half. It makes no sense. How are we supposed to see that coming? Like I said, it's because Leon S. Kennedy is the focal point of this whole thing. They had to make every man around him worse or weaker, less significant. And when they couldn't do that with Jason, they made him this irrational, unethical villain. Because the thing that makes him the biggest villain wasn't saying some people die for the country. Which is one thing that y'all love to throw into people who are from sandy places. Y'all love to make it seem like they're all like that. It wasn't him going against Leon S. Kennedy. That was his death sentence. Because once you go against Leon S. Kennedy in this canon, you are no longer useful to Capcom. They make him break Shen Mei in half so that we know as the audience we should not like this man. He literally could have grabbed her and King Kong did right the crap out of that building. But instead, we had to make sure this man was not to be trusted, which means everything he has said is put into question. Leon gets to be like, well, maybe the, pre the US isn't as bad. Maybe it's just this one man. Maybe it's just the general. The president had nothing to do with this. He doesn't know any better. He's just a little old president. He just a little old president. He, he ain't know no better. Please. So Leon rushes into action like the freaking superhero y'all have made him. The moment he sees Claire, doom, 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 shoom, boom. He just fell from like six flights, but boom, 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 arm, legs, arms, arms, legs. Best thing in the world. Oh. And then this one scene comes that I saw a picture of already on Twitter where Claire and Leon are, are embracing on the ground and he's like, you okay? And then she's like, yeah. And people made it seem like it was bigger than it was. They, there was no chemistry between them at that moment. I don't think you guys know what chemistry is. I don't think you know what it looks like. I don't think you've experienced it because that there was no, there was no sexual tension. It was literally like blue balls. They blue balled us with that. And for anyone to have gotten any sort of anything from that, I'm I'm worried for you because are is your is are you okay? Do you have intimacy not just with others but with yourself? Do you have intimacy with yourself? Are you okay? Because nothing in their eyes made it look like they were nothing was going on. I got nothing. Stop gassing their relationship up. I used to be a Cleon. I used to be a Cleon. I wanted Claire and Leon to be together, but as it stands, Claire can do better. Better than a superhero? Yes, because he's not a superhero. He's a pseudo superhero. You've created him. You've created him in this universe that is the CG canon of these movies slash series because you didn't want to make a movie for some reason. You knew that no one would watch this crap. No one would sit through it. You knew that people would want to see what happened at the end of a series because it's in different parts. Things can change, but they don't change from the first episode to the last episode. I feel the exact same. It is boring fodder that adds nothing to the canon. So moments before the president, one of the most political people in the world goes to do this thing that's going to cause conflict with China or whatever. Dude, Patrick, I'm, I'm just going to call him Patrick because I think that's what his name is, but I don't think I've ever heard his name and he's not that significant. And he's that cute, pretty boy that they use to queer bait people into thinking that Leon has a male partner queer baiting things. And I hate I hate to see it because it's just like, please put in real relationships. Stop queer baiting. Queer baiting is not representation. You scrubs. It's annoying. And I'm not even of the LGBTQ plus community and it offends me. So Patrick tells the president, Leon S. Kennedy, yeah, um, China did have nothing to do with this seconds before he's supposed to make a big decision. And what do you know? He says, oh, we're gonna do whatever it takes and everything in our power and their hardships of the past. The way he said that just rubbed me the wrong way. Like, what do you mean hardships of the <sighs> It was a civil war. Then B.O.W.'s slapped the crap out of them. So the hero at Palalala jumping from place to place like the Incredible Hulk while in pure misogynistic fashion, Leon goes to save the day while Claire has to go in front of the controls. And then she's like, well, if I can figure this out, so 
It's just like, okay. Why couldn't she go and save the day? Oh, because she ain't got no peace. She ain't got no peace. Leon's the one who's going to go save the day. Not like he can do anything on a computer. He's but a man. He only knows gun go boom boom. And he literally, he had more chemistry with that rocket launcher he picked up than he does with Claire. To let y'all know. In infinite darkness. Then we get to where Claire is incapacitated again for the fifth time in these CG movies slash series. I just want to know why is Leon, why did Leon leave this thing without a scratch? This is like the ninth time. How many times is he going to leave without a scratch? No bleeding eyeball, no head wound, no scratches, no bruises. But Claire got her arm jacked out. The socket. So to let you guys know, Leon gets grabbed by the neck by a B.O.W. monster creature. And he's not in a neck sling. Nothing. By the end, just to let you guys know. So they don't care about realism regardless. One could say he couldn't survive that. But if he's going to survive no no neck brace no nothing that's too much weakness in the eyes of a misogynistic piece of crap and jason keeps saying oh when they see me then they'll know terror just because there was one throwaway line he said in like the first episode or second episode second episode because guess what in the first episode he didn't get to say nothing really second episode he was like yeah is it fear that drives people it's fear and i think that was the third episode he said that but regardless it's because he said that one thing he stuck on it and it's it's interesting because this same issue came up in resident evil revelations where there was a guy comms officer of the zimnobia he was like mayday mayday because that was the last thing he was saying and that's what he was repeating and that's interesting But that's not the last thing that was on his mind when he died. One could make the argument it was. But I just don't understand how he can still keep that humanity. And still have that in his mind. I don't know. And another thing. While Leon's in the air and he's being choked to death. It's not Claire that saves him. But Jason throws him back out when he could have dropped him in the acid. Why didn't you do it, Jason? Why? So because Jason is an idiot, he lets Leon live and Leon, with no bones broken or arms twisted, nothing wrong with him, goes and does the little thing, which if you didn't incapacitate Claire, Leon could have been saved by Claire. But since you broke her arm, Leon's the one that has to save the day and he kills Jason by moving a lever with his completely healthy tendons and bones still intact. He goes into the acid and dies. I really feel bad for Jason. So, for as skinny as Leon is, it seems like he's got a lot of strength in his arms. Even though Chris is one of the strongest looking dudes in the canon, he hasn't been able to do half as much as what Leon has done in this whole movie with his arms. He, like, dangles over acid. Yeah, whatever, adrenaline. Fight me, really. Just fight me. I can fight you on adrenaline. The president says something hilarious. He's like, oh... The U.S. will stand in front of peace and stability. Like, there's peace and stability here. But, really interesting. Peace spits out propaganda. Like, why did this... I, I I gotta breathe. When everyone stands up to clap at that propaganda, it looks real strange. We're 2021, and the animation really looks strange. Like, it may look crystal clear and crisp, But it's strange looking. The way they walk is strange. The way their heads move. Weird. And they kind of skip over how Leon got out of the predicament he was in. Um, Last time we saw him, he was dangling by one arm on this very shady looking cable. That was very long. So he had to climb that thing. But now he's just walking up as Claire's broken arms busted. He's not even limping. He's not even limping. He literally came out this like Superman. And then you have the hero of Panam Stan. He sits there and looks at him and the light is shining on him. It's basically like, you can come to heaven, my son. You have filled your need and you have died for your cause. You have ascended. Like, I don't know how I feel about that. You guys decide how to feel about that. I already know. I already know why they did that. And it's it's another... It's another jab at his country, honestly. It is. And I think it's hilarious. This is hilarious. This is the funniest thing. I know they didn't mean this to be funny, but it's freaking hilarious. So Leon's looking at his corpse, his 
like literally it's like melting and he's like oh i won't let anything and then he's like <gasps> and then he puts his gun out because he's like bro like he's still not dead like it that was funny the only reason why you had that comical comical scene is because they're trying to make it seem like leon has any form of weakness which he doesn't he doesn't you guys didn't give it to him you didn't write him that way you wrote him like a superhero and you made claire damsel that's all i have to say about that honestly you were trying to make it seem like oh now he's like oh man i passed the torch on to you the torch of fear and it's just like okay you you wouldn't have had to tell us that if you would have shown us that but you never do leon's still stoic as ever can't have good old white knight crying the incels wouldn't like that so patrick oogles over leon while the sun sets on them literally calls him a hero he's like that's some hero level stuff and then leon's like nah i'm just invincible nah the guys that make me just hate their mothers <laughs> high five man he's like you did so much and claire was kind of just there and he was like yeah no right <laughs> what a damsel they bro moment in the sunset while well, the president gets on some fighter, some jet. Leon doesn't even get a thank you from the president. He just gets a nod and he's like, <laughs> now I know it's anime because they did that thing that in anime when someone's not talking to them and it's, they're like 9 billion kilometers away and they're like, <laughs> and they put their head down and the other person all the way across the map does the same thing. Now we know it's an anime. So we see that the secretary is alive, of course, as I, I don't understand how he was alive because he was in the same place they were. And if Claire couldn't get out, Leon couldn't get out until they magically got out. And old dude was jumping from place to place to get out, which that's exactly how he could have escaped. I don't understand how that loser who got bit in the neck that's like 50 some years old crawled up anywhere to escape that underground lab before the acid got to him makes no sense and he was not mutated so don't even come to me and like oh well he was mutated no he wasn't so it's the end he goes and tricell protects him they don't even say it's it's wesker or excella we don't get nothing else we just get a picture of tricell and people probably literally like climaxed to see that but i don't because i'm beyond that i have ascended past the need to see little tiny hints at something that was once so great be reduced to such crap i just skipped past that whole leon and claire thing at the end because i was like okay she's in a sling and he's not in anything i can't i cannot that was it that was it guys we did it. Let's talk about the 10 staples right now. Can't wait. Number one, horror. Ambience, music, sounds. The OP was terrible. It was too political for me. There was no horror to me. I, I wasn't afraid. In any moment, I was not afraid. The ambience was terrible. The music was so low under all the action that I could barely hear it when there was music playing during the show. Puzzles not applicable. Backtracking, nope. The locations were terrible looking. Tyrant dude, he just looked basic. He wasn't anything extraordinary to look at. I wouldn't consider him a cool model. I wouldn't l want that as a figurine. Jason's mutation looked basic. He just looked like a very thorny tyrant. Nothing special. Different perspectives. Claire should have been omitted from the script. If you wanted Leon to kiss another girl, this would be like the third time. You could have created a woman that was not not Ada, that would have been his love interest that he could have saved. But you wanted to bring us, the Claire stands, into this garbage just to degrade her character. When someone entered her place, why would she not either leave or have a piece waiting for them? Boom, boom, two shots, dead. Why was she captured and incapacitated? Why did you break her arm and Leon got no injuries whatsoever? Six, zombies, virus, B.O.W.s. This virus is too ridiculous to even take seriously. What is it even called? They only said it like once or twice. Do you know why we remember the T virus, the G virus? It's because it was said more than once, more than twice throughout the whole thing. I did not binge watch this thing. I've got other things to do. 
than watch Infinite Darkness. Why didn't you just make it a movie? None of the infected in this show were cool, except the rats, and those were made by mistake. Seven, corporations and anti-capitalism. As I said, this is the most political piece of crap you've made, and not only does it hit those blocks but try sell you put at the end to make us feel like oh wow look at the connection you guys are so cool you guys don't you guys remember try sell yeah spectacular awesome superb job you're not gonna get any cookies for knowing your own canon anymore i won't be handing them out a gameplay slash action it's an action-packed situation i wished that claire got more action she was from the same game as leon you preferring Leon over Claire shows your clear lack of depth and ability to write female characters. If you can't do it, maybe you shouldn't be a writer. Maybe you should get somebody else to write those characters. Maybe you should get someone else that cares about these characters, about seeing them change, about seeing them grow, because whoever made this obviously didn't. I don't care what language it was originally in, because take out the sound, make it a silent film, and Claire is still a damsel in distress. Now, I kind of liked her voice actor a little bit better than I did in Resident Evil 2 remake. I really did. Leon's basic. He's meh. Every person that plays Leon plays Leon well, because he's just a blank slate with no connections to anybody else. Speaking of connections, number nine, continuity. Does it fit in the story? No. Leon never talks about Shen Mei. We never see Ashley Graham just in a picture. Just like I said, I will not be giving out free A's because you guys know your own canon. No more freebies. You've used them up for three lifetimes. You put Tricell at the end. whoop de freaking do We already knew where this was based on the, the timeline you gave us, based on what year this takes place in. We obviously know Resident Evil 6 hasn't happened yet. Leon does not fit in the canon from the movies or this slop because he is the exact same. There is no change in his character that makes it look as if he's actually gone through anything. He has no scars and he doesn't have to have anything spectacular because as I've said previously, some games have not happened yet. So he can't be missing an eyeball. But it's real interesting that you decided to break Claire's arm when her arm works just fine in Revelations 2. You knew that would heal. So break Leon's leg, something, if you insisted Claire needed to be broken by the end of this film. Number 10, overall story. Does it stand alone? No. It does not stand alone. It is called Resident Evil. You played the dumb dumb game and capitalized all the letters of Resident Evil because you wanted us to know that it was Resident Evil. You are riding on the coattail and it ends here. Infinite Darkness was the last piece of garbage that's going to be accepted. Mediocrity will not be rewarded. As of right now, I have put a thumbs down on Resident Evil Infinite Darkness and hopefully enough people understand and does the same. As I have said before, this pseudo movie series gets no score it would just be ridiculous to say negative 100 out of 10. it would make no sense to insult resident evil zero by giving it zero i have talked about all of the flaws that i've seen in this series and i can only hope that all the people who even consider themselves fans i don't care if you call yourself a real fan or if you don't consider yourself a real fan no that this was simply unacceptable. For those saying that this movie was great and you had a wonderful time, I am happy for you that you found some joy in this because it have brought me nothing but sorrow, knowing that they could care less about any female characters and it just goes to show. And when you've got people complaining about how a girl's not pretty enough in a game, rather than teaching your sons how to be better men as adults, talking to your nephews about how they treat their significant others and the people around them, you decide to cater to this misogynistic point of view. Make the girls prettier, make the breasts a little bouncier. And by the end, they're reduced to nothing but exposition dumps, pretty faces and empty heads. I'm done with this. I will never be watching this again. I will not refer to it as anything having to do with canon unless it specifically pertains to it and i have to as far as i'm concerned it has done nothing to change the tides or make anything different than what i thought before even watching episode one it's a terrible series and it would have been a terrible movie and that's why they made it a series they knew it would be unsuccessful but if that's the case why make this they could have done anything different they could have made claire actually have a piece they could have made leon break a leg 
But why not? You have to ask yourself this. Because the reason you come to is the reason they did. And that's what we have to change. The reason why they won't stop. This won't be the last time they do this to Claire Redfield or Shen Mei, used for exposition and thrown away. This won't be the last time they do that to Rebecca either, unless we make them stop. I don't know what that means for you, but what that means for me is I'm gonna talk about politics when I very well feel like it, especially when you insist on putting it in my resident evil films.